The BMW X1 and the Mercedes-Benz GLA are basically the pick of the crop in terms of compact premium SUVs. And sure enough, they maintain a very large market share in this country. However, if you're looking for a car that stands out, then this may be appealing to you. However, the Audi Q3 you see here is over 80,000 ringgit more expensive than the base BMW X1. So, is the character worth the premium? Today, we are going to find out. My name is Ayman Ayabdullah. This is Mlaysen Motoring. This is our review of the 2022 Audi Q3 1.4 TFSI. Now, when you're talking about Audis, there are two things you need to talk about, which is design and technology. Now, in terms of design, I think that the Audi Q3 does look pretty good. You have these sharp-looking full LED headlights with a very intricate-looking LED daytime running light made to look a little bit like the Audi Atron. You also get these very pronounced side breathers down the front, which do nothing. You also get an enormous single frame grille with these silver slats that go all the way down to show the verticality of the car again because this is somewhat off-roady and you get a little bit of a silver skid plate. Now before we proceed around the car it is worth noting this car is sold in Malaysia solely as a 1.4 TFSI S line which is why this car looks a little bit more aggressive rather than off-roady. And the other thing I'd like to point out is the grille because as you can tell the single frame grille on this car is absolutely enormous but i still think that it looks good so i think that bmw should take a leaf out of audi's book because this is proof that you can have a big grille without it looking absolutely disgusting now down the side of the q3 you can see a lot of very audi hallmarks these flared wheel arches for example sort of recount the tales of Quattro and all the wonderful things that it used to do even though this car is front-wheel drive. You also get this painted contrast grey around the bodywork. This is not unpainted plastic, again to sort of emphasise its off-roadiness even though again it is only front-wheel drive. You do get some satin chrome around the doors which I think does look pretty good and you get some satin silver roof rails. Mercifully this car now comes with keyless entry, which was not available in the previous generation Audi Q3. What is rather unfortunate, however, is the fact this car rides on 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped in Hankook Ventus SUV tyres. Now, the tyres themselves are fine. The issue I have are with the wheels themselves. They look incredibly uninteresting. And for a car that is in excess of 300,000 ringgit, I would assume that uh, Audi would be able to fit something a little bit more visually interesting down the side. Now at the rear of the Q3, you can see that these haunches create a very nice shoulder line to the car where you now get a slightly narrower tailgate where you have split horizontal taillights. This is an improvement over the outgoing car where you had a clamshell tailgate which required a second set of lights on the bumper, which were rather ugly. Now, it is worth noting that because it's a compact premium SUV, there is a little bit of a rake to this boot, and overall, it is rather shapely. You get a bit more of this contrast grey on the back, although right now it's contrast dirt because it rained, and you also get these um, <clears throat> fake pseudo exhaust exits, which I really don't like. The taillights on this car, however, are very good looking, and being full LED, they also have these scrolling indicators that have become synonymous with Audi. Now, it's only at the back, the front are just static LEDs, but that's fine. You also get a kick to open function for the tailgate, but I'm not going to do that because I know it's very funny for all of you. You do get a powered tailgate and at the back, you get a decent amount of space. It is worth noting that this isn't the biggest in its class. The XC40 from Volvo has a lot more cargo room and it is slightly smarter in the sense that you get you know, the cargo divider and so on. Whereas here you get a space saver spare wheel and a subwoofer. But in terms of smart features back here, you do at least get these little tabs which can hold the 
fake floor up a little bit and this car does come as standard with uh, cargo nets so if you have it installed via the little hooks in the corners it can keep smaller items at bay without rolling about you also get a 12 volt socket in here and a light somewhere that i cannot see and there is a fixed parcel shelf which does not fit underneath the floor now as far as i'm concerned the exterior of this car is decent it is an audi so it's very stoic it's very well built and you have a lot of kind of inside jokes as it were a lot of sharp creases and angles which sort of tells to or rather speaks towards Audi's capabilities when it comes to manufacturing, being able to make these very close diameter folds and so on. But I think the bigger question is, how does this car feel inside? So let's move there. Now inside the Q3, although the outside may look very similar to the outgoing model, the inside certainly looks and feels very different. For starters, you have Audi's latest MMI system here displayed on a touchscreen. You no longer get a rotary knob or any sort of buttons and so on. And admittedly, this is perhaps one of the best touchscreen based infotainment systems out there. It's very snappy and very responsive. And this screen has to be among the highest resolution screens I've seen in a long time. The other thing to this car is that mercifully, it still retains its physical knobs for the climate control, which means you have even more tactility and more interaction with this car. The thing about Audi is, is that everything is built very, very well. You get lots of lovely buttons and lots of lovely switch gear with this unique Audi mechanism to them, where they just operate really smoothly and very nicely. And that's all very nice to use. The same goes with the buttons on the steering wheel ahead of the 12.3 inch virtual cockpit that you get in this car. Again, one of the best digital instrumentation systems on the market. The buttons that you get here, however, are very minimal because there are only very few buttons here. You can, however, configure the central display however you'd like it, but unfortunately the cruise control is out on this little stalk here, which is very peculiar and very difficult to use if you're not used to it. The other rather odd thing about this car is that the volume and start-stop controls are on this separate panel, which is rather not very nice plastic. And this leads on to more very not nice plastic in other places. So for example, the top of the dash, for example, and down here is all nice and soft. But then as soon as you get sort of here, it gets a bit scratchy. Same goes for the glove box and on the lower parts of the doors. It's very clear that Audi wants you to know that you have bought an entry-level car and that is exactly the sensation I'm getting here. However, because this is aimed at younger buyers, this car does come with a pretty decent audio system. No name brand here, but it's all right. And you do get ambient lighting, which I'm sure younger people will like quite a lot. Now, the thing about younger people is that they have active lifestyles and lots of friends and so they'd need plenty of space in the back to accommodate them and in the rear this car is sort of all right you can tell that it is larger than the x1 and the BF and the mercedes-benz gla but it's still not particularly noteworthy because the volvo xc40 certainly has a lot more space for rear passengers and mosquitoes now the problem with this car that i have is that once again at the rear it's very unremarkable i have a couple of air con vents here but that's about it and the plastic quality here is Mm, not very nice and this piece of plastic trim which has been painted silver to attempt to mask it and make it look metallic doesn't look very nice the metallic door handles and the metallic ambient lighting strip here certainly make it feel a bit more premium but then what you actually touch feels a bit low rent mercifully however because it is an audi and they understand that human beings will actually sit back here the seat bases are rather long which means if you can see i do have decent under thigh support and because the front seats are mounted on relatively high plinths for the uh, tracks i can tuck my feet in underneath should i need to these seats can also slide forwards and backwards in theory although i can't seem to get it to move for some reason and the backrests do recline to some degree for example if you'd like to sit on a church pew you can or you can lean it all the way back for a bit more comfort you also get a rear armrest which is very sturdy with a couple of cup holders that flip up like this they are not the type that are always there Porsche and so it's very nice and comfortable to sit back here you do have exposed isofix mounts back here which 
On one hand, some may think don't look very nice, but to me it means that there are no plastic covers for you to lose. And the doors, however, do not open very wide, and so it may be difficult for you to load a very large rear-facing child seat back here. And if you do have children back here, you will immediately note that this car does not come with rear sun blinds. So you will probably need to tint this car a little bit more to cut out the UV as not to harm the little baby children in the rear. And that's about it, really. So let's see if this car has any redeeming qualities in the drive. Now driving the Audi Q3, <clears throat> well, hmm. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you would be looking at a Q3 if you want to stand out compared to a BMW X1 or a Mercedes-Benz GLA or a Volvo XC40. Now, under the bonnet, you get a 1.4-litre TFSI engine, which puts out about 150 PS and 250 newton meters of torque, which I believe is accurate, and if I'm not, the figures will appear on the screen below. And with power going to the front wheels via a six-speed wet-clutch S-Tronic automatic gearbox. Now, I understand that for many of you, you will most likely be responding to this video going, that doesn't sound like a particularly interesting powertrain. And you're right, because it's not. Now, a lot of that power comes in at about 1,500 RPM, which means it is relatively accessible. And this wet clutch automatic does do a decent job at putting you in the right ratio when you need it. Sort of. The only trouble is that because you only have 150 horsepower, even though you've got 250 newton meters of torque, which is a sizable amount, no doubt, it doesn't get you very far. So, for example, cruising in this car, you want to max out at about 120 kilometers an hour. That's not a recommendation, but that's sort of kind of as fast as you'd want to go, although that is illegal. <coughs> Nobody speeds, we don't speed. Now, because if you were to venture further than that, we are told that the car runs out of puff very easily, which may lend a suggestion that maybe this car is meant for town driving. Well, for town driving, there are a few things about this car that are quite positive. So this gearbox reacts relatively quickly, but because it's a double clutch automatic, when you're beginning from a standstill, there is a little bit of that clutch thing going on, which I'm not sure you can hear right now. Uh, and the steering wheel is very light as standard, which means cutting through traffic or maneuvering through parking spaces is very easy to do. Unfortunately, <coughs> beyond that, things are not so great. So for starters, like most other Porsche holding Salzburg vehicles, those being Audis and Volkswagens in Malaysia, this car does not come with any active safety features. You've got Audi pre-safe, I have no idea what that means. Uh, and you also get automatic headlights, if, if that's a safety feature. You get automatic wipers, if that's a safety feature. You don't get blind spot monitoring, you don't get lane keep assist, you don't get lane centering. Nothing. You also do not get a 360 degree camera. You do get all around parking sensors, but you only get a reverse camera. Now, admittedly, the reverse camera is very good, as it would have to be given the sheer quality of the screen in here, which is fantastic. And if they had used anything less than a fantastic camera, you would have immediately noticed. So I'm glad that they did that. But the lack of 360 degree camera in a car like this is a bit noticeable. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, wait, this is the 1.4 TFSI. So it goes up against the basic X1, and it goes up against the basic XC40, and it goes up against the basic Mercedes-Benz GLA and GLB. Yes, in theory. The problem is this car is over 300,000 ringgit, which means for this amount of money, you could actually get into a Volvo XC60 or a BMW X3 or, in fact, a run-out model Mercedes-Benz GLC, which is one size bigger, with bigger engines, and more tech, and more stuff. So, when you take that into account, I understand that Audis in this country are going to command a premium because they are fully imported, which means you must put this up against other fully imported compact cars, like the Jaguar E-Pace, and that's it. So, but the E-Pace, on the other hand, feels like a much more luxurious experience, both in terms of the interior accoutrements and appointments, as well as the overall purchase and after-sales experience. Audi is great, no doubt, but Jaguar Land Rover does it a little bit better. And 
on top of that, when you're buying an E-Pace, you're also getting a bigger engine, which means you do have a little bit more breathing room when you're trying to cruise, especially long distance at high speeds. That does bring me on to what this car is good at, and also another point that this car is not so great at. So when you're driving over longer distances at high speed, things like NVH levels are very important, and to that end, and to Audi's credit, the NVH levels in this car are not that bad. There is a little bit of tyre roar, but then again, it's an SUV. You should expect a little bit more tyre roar in an SUV compared to, say, a saloon. So that's fine. And admittedly, if you were to upgrade these tyres from the Hankook Ventus that they're running on to perhaps something from Continental or Pirelli, you may be able to get something with a softer compound and therefore it would be a bit quieter. Wind noise is practically non-existent, but that is generally a hallmark of Audi vehicles. The trouble <laughs> comes from the ride unfortunately, because it's not uncomfortable, but it's also not smooth. And it, despite it not being smooth, it's also not particularly dynamic. This car essentially feels like somebody put four wheels in a washing machine, because there is absolutely no character whatsoever through the steering wheel. Now, I know that, again, there will be some of you screaming at your screens by now, saying that, it's a crossover, it's not meant to be dynamic. And you're right, crossovers are not meant to be dynamic. And yet, so many crossovers still manage to be dynamic. The BMW X1 immediately jumps out at me. So does the Volvo XC40. As well as even more affordable crossovers like Mazda's CX-5 and CX-8, which are both larger than this, and yet still manage to offer some degree of driving dynamics that this car seems completely bereft of. And that's the trouble. If you were to buy a Q3, like I started at the beginning, like I said at the beginning of this video, you are buying this because you want it to give you more character. It's a more characterful option compared to the run-of-the-mill X1 and GLA that you see everywhere. And yet, for something that looks, sort of, as characterful as it does, the drive is vanilla. And it's such a shame because the first generation Q3 because believe it or not, this is only the second generation. The first generation Q3, being as bland as anything, was fine. Because in my mind, I justified it by saying maybe it was a rush job. Perhaps Audi decided, oh, we need a compact crossover. We don't have much time to develop one. So we'll just nick some parts from Volkswagen in the form of the Tiguan. And we'll put a, an Audi body on it and an Audi interior inside it. And off we go and, and, we're, and all is good to go. But this is a bespoke Audi product. Yes, it runs on MQV just like every other car in the world, it seems. But it's not fun. And it seems a bit strange given the fact that Audi is a company that sort of made its name in rallying and with quattro and sort of all-wheel drive performance and, and, and proper performance driving and competition at that. None of that. None of that is in here. You wouldn't... This... Mm. Mm. And that kind of sums up how I feel about this car. It's very... Uh, mm, mm. So, would I recommend a Q3? Now, it begs the question as to why you wouldn't buy a Volkswagen Tiguan. Because for a lot less money, you could get a Tiguan Allspace R-Line, which has ventilated front seats and two extra seats in the boot, if you should so want it, and all-wheel drive and more power and a, a bit more in safety features. And in terms of overall interior fit and finish, it's not really that far off. Although, I guess, I guess, perhaps if you really, really don't want an X1 and you really don't want a Mercedes-Benz GLA and you somehow have forgotten, like very many of us, that the Lexus UX exists, then maybe this may be the car for you. Admittedly, if you were to compare this to the Lexus UX, the Q3 would perhaps be a slightly better companion over long-distance highway drives because there is a little bit more poke and a little bit more shove from this powertrain. However, for a lot less money, you could get a fully loaded Volvo XC40, where you could get a 2.0-litre 4-cylinder if you spend a lot of time on the motorway, or you could get a 1.5-litre 3-cylinder plug-in hybrid if you spend more of your time in town, where that may very well be the only car in this segment that could best the Q3 in terms of fuel consumption. And of course, if you're buying a Volvo, any Volvo, it comes with level two semi-autonomy in the form of pilot assist, which is worth its weight in gold. So 
does a Q3 work as a car? Yes, but only as a car, nothing more. And that is a shame because we know that Audi is capable of much, much greater things. And it feels a little bit sad that this is kind of what they're reduced to. In any case, that's been our review of the 2022 Audi Q3 1.4 TFSI S-Line. Fully imported front wheel drive from PHS. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon so you're notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care, stay safe and jalan budu. Thank you.